and welcome to your college application guide for 2021. I'm Mike McGuire for Writing Aid's B2B Marketing Manager, and today I am joined by Dr. Lindy Ledahowski, and she has got a great session prepared for you guys on everything you need to know about college applications. Lindy is a former high school English teacher and an English professor, a published author and a scholar, and she co-founded Essay Jack, which is an academic writing software that was acquired by WISE this summer. She's an expert in writing and teaching writing, and it is just awesome to have her here today. We're super excited. This is going to be an info-packed session. All right, well, Lindy, would you like to take it away? All right, I will happily take it away. So hopefully we're getting my screen share up and running so that everybody can uh, see everything that I've got on tap for you so that we can make this the best application season ever. So thanks very much uh, for joining us, those of you who are here live in the flesh, and those of you who will be watching this afterwards, uh, you do have your timing right. Um, November, December is the start of college application season, so you are on the right track simply by uh, paying attention to the fact that this, this is the time. So what we're going to talk about today and what I'll kind of walk you through are some top tips for making the college application essay stand out. And I did um, a guest blog for Pro Writing Aid on this very topic. I'll share um, the URL for that in the chat a little bit later. And then when this is recorded, we'll, we'll share that um, also wherever the recording is shared uh, so that you can have both. Because I don't want to replicate and duplicate too much of the same information, but of course, some of it is going to be replicated as Micah has sort of already given a bit of an introduction. This is me, uh, Dr. Lindy Ledahowski. I have a bunch of degrees. Uh, I have written uh, books and articles, and I've spent the latter part of my career um, teaching and focusing on academic writing, scholarly writing, essays, teaching people how to do essays. And that, of course, gets into the application essays, the college application process. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So we will start off with just some context setting. So the common application, more than 900 colleges across the U United States use the common application process for admissions. This is over a million students a year use this every year. This is really the focus of what we're going to be talking about today. So while there are some colleges and universities that aren't using the um, common app, and there are other jurisdictions that aren't using the common app. That's really our focus today. Uh, however, I'm going to flag where the points and comments that I'm going to give you the tips and tricks of the trade apply across the board so that there's that broader applicability, although of course, um, it does in fact matter a lot for this common app. So if this is you, or it might be you, where and how do you begin? So of course you go to commonapp.org, click start your application button, create an account and log in. So these are the first steps to start getting your um, portal organized so that you can begin this application process. And again, um, for some of the early applications, that's already November uh, for the next fall 2022. So uh, you're in the right place at the right time. Um, for a lot of the colleges, it'll be January 2022 is when the application deadlines are. But you want to go in, start your application, create your account, and start to look for the schools, the colleges that are of interest to you so that you can add them and then look at the specific requirements for those institutions. So um, some of them might have their own sort of quirky additional uh, bits or particular deadlines that you need to be aware of. So that's step number one. The common application includes an application essay. That's what we're here to talk about today. So there are a number of component parts in the common app. Uh, we can't go through them all in a webinar, but what we can do is go through the tips the tricks and the guides that are going to give you the best shot at having your application essay stand out. So if there are 900 colleges using the Common App and over a million students using the Common App every year, how do you make your essay stand out from the million, literally, of other essays that are coming through the system? And that's what we're focusing on today so that your personality and what makes you uniquely you is showcased in your application essay. 
So this year there are seven essay questions. So the first one is really getting at something like, what's the differentiator? What makes you you? The second is something about obstacles. Is there something that you've overcome? Is there um, adversity that you want to talk about? The third one is really getting at like change and challenge and are you a kind of advocate personality? Those kinds of things. The fourth is gives you the opportunity to talk about gratitude, thankfulness, gratefulness. So is there something that you're particularly grateful for? Five um, allows you to talk about an accomplishment, but really it's asking you to talk about growth. So something that allowed you to really grow. Six, is there a passion of yours that you really want to showcase? And seven is kind of an open topic. So again, you don't have to remember all of that uh, right now. I did just want to put them all on one screen, but we're going to work through each of these seven uh, quest questions, each of these seven essay prompts to get a sense for how you can make yours stand out and be uh, particular and but also authentic and true to you and who you are. Um, and as I mentioned, even though we're focusing on the kind of requirements and the expectations of the common app, um, these same types of prompts are the sorts of things that are expected when you're asked for a personal statement. So that might be outside of this common app preparation for your application for college. Um, there are other contexts where you might be asked to produce a personal statement and a personal statement uh, will, will function in, in much the same way. So these tips and tricks uh, have that broad applicability as well. Now, before you sit down to decide which of those four, seven, which, which of those seven prompts for which you're um, given the opportunity to write this year, the most important first step is to brainstorm. So before you can decide which of those seven questions is going to be the best one for you, which one is the one that really speaks to your personality and your traits and is going to let you showcase yourself to the best, um, you're going to want to kind of focus on bringing those characteristics of yourself to the surface. Now, you might be 16, 17, 18 years old. Maybe you have an idea of who you are. Maybe you're going to need some help unearthing that. So I often say the first um, way to brainstorm and help to get some reflection on who you are is to turn to the people who know you and who love you. So for this uh, tip panel, I often say it's like your family, uh, your best friends, people who really know you. So it's up to you to decide who those other people are, but ask them, what's one word you would use to describe me? What characteristic of mine do you like the most? When you think of me, what's the first thing that comes to mind? And if you ask three to five people these same questions, you'll start to see some similar things come to the surface. So if, if people say that you're really empathetic, um, that's going to come out. If they say that you're really ambitious, if they say that you're really creative, those are three very different personality types. Um, but once you know, okay, well, I'm the person who's very empathetic, you'll focus on those kinds of traits in your um, application essay. Or if you're the really ambitious one, you're going to want to focus on those types of traits if you're the really creative one. So again, it's really important to start doing some of this pre-thinking before you actually sit down and focus on the nuts and bolts of the essay itself. And then another way of getting at this clarity of mind about who you are really at the core um, is to ask yourself these three questions. What have I done that I'm the most proud of? What do I like the most about myself? And am I different today than I was two years ago? And the follow-up on that is, you know, if yes, does that mean that I, I have a very consistent character or, or that I don't have a very consistent character or there was something that changed um, that I, I want to flag that change or, or if I'm no different, 
then does that speak to my consistency? Um, and again, what have I done that I'm most proud of is very different if the thing that you've done that you're most proud of is um, that you traveled all on your own when you were only 15 years old versus if you are an Olympic level athlete. Those are two very different kinds of accomplishments. Both are amazing, but you'll want to clarify um, the type of thing that you have done that engenders your sense of pride in yourself. And again, what do I like most about myself um, is often a really hard one to answer. Um, hopefully all of you do like yourself for many, many reasons. Um, and if you can find uh, the reason you like yourself the most, that again is, is often an indicator of something that you can speak about at length authentically in an application essay. Um, and again, as I say, I hope you like lots of things about yourself. Uh, I always find this one challenging and uh, because I'm very critical. And so that's, again, one of the things that if I were writing an application essay, that would be a flag for me that it's a challenge for me to like myself, for instance. So now let's say that after that brainstorming, we've decided, OK, I'm, I'm going to think about um, maybe tackling that question number one. Does some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that's so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it? If this sounds like you, then please share your story. And what we're looking for here really is, is there something about you that's a differentiator? Is there something about you that makes you stand out? Um, from everybody else that you know. Now, it could be a circumstance of your existence. It could be um, an interest. It could be that you were born someplace really interesting and fascinating. Um, the big tip here is in an application essay that's tackling this topic, um, while it's true for all of the application essays that you want to show not tell. This one, it's very important that you find um, adjectives and descriptive words in the narrative construction of the story of you that will showcase how you stand out. So instead of saying simply that I am different from everybody I know, show how that difference becomes manifest. The other um, caution I would give if you are choosing to write on this topic, which again is really trying to allow you to articulate um, something insightful about what differentiates you from the um, one million other people who might be applying, um, is that you actually do understand um, the level of, of of difference. So to simply say, oh, well, you know, what makes me stand out is that I'm, you know, one of a family of four and I'm the middle child and that makes me different from my siblings. While that may be true, globally speaking, that's not really a differentiator. There are many people who are middle children and there are many people who have siblings. And so um, I'm not demonstrating that I am conscious or worldly enough to understand a broader context outside of my family. And so as a result, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come across as a bit limited in that kind of an essay. So again, try to really weed out, um, and even if it means doing a bit of a Google search, once you think, okay, this is gonna be my differentiator, um, how common is it? So if you say, okay, well, my differentiator is, you know, that I have this super weird condition and I see the world in different colors or something like that, and there's a name for that look it up and see. So if, if what you have is actually a really small percentile of people in the world, then yeah, that's probably something that's that's worth chatting about. So again, that's the way into trying to tackle a response to this first um, essay prompt for this year's application season. The second prompt is the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, a setback, a failure. How did it affect you and what did you learn from the experience? And so again, as I said in the beginning, this um, question is really wanting to give you an opportunity to talk about um, obstacles 
and growth and resilience and grit uh, and problem solving and tenacity and all of those characteristics. So if in the brainstorming session, um, some of your friends are saying like, yeah, you're really tough or you've had, you've overcome adversity or you've had a string of bad luck and it never gets you down or some, those kinds of things would be um, indications that this might be a question that can let you showcase your qualities and traits to their best, uh, in their best light. Um, and so with this, uh, again, there's a big risk uh, is that um, often we feel, because all of us struggle, so we all feel our own struggles, and we all feel that we can talk about our own struggles in such a way that they can demonstrate our growth. Um, however, uh, and everybody's struggle is, is obviously experienced legitimately as a struggle. However, there are um, objective factors, globally speaking, um, where a, a particular struggle of mine could seem very small in comparison to somebody else's. So if I'm going to write an essay about the struggle I had because my sister borrowed my shirt and I hate her, uh, that's going to fall very flat in comparison to an essay written by um, a, a refugee who has left behind a war-torn context. And so, again, I'm not saying, and I mean, I shouldn't be glib, uh, you know, obviously you're, you're smart enough, you're not going to write about the obstacle being a, a sibling fight. So I'm, I'm um, being a little bit exaggerated there to make the point. But just the caution here is to be mindful because um, we can all get caught up in our own worlds. That's, that's the nature of human existence. Um, we, we can't see beyond our own noses sometimes. But for a, an essay question like this, you want to demonstrate a certain um, sense of uh, socio-political awareness and can situate the obstacle that you're talking about and the opportunity for growth that you have personally experienced within um, a researched and an intelligent socio-political context so that uh, what you're talking about makes sense and demonstrates to an admissions committee that you're worldly, that you understand the world in which you live and you see yourself within it. And so not only are you then showcasing your own um, sense of growth and tenacity and problem solving and all of those good traits, but you're also situating those traits of yourself within a broader global context. And so that's, again, something that's going to signal um, that you're, you're aware of your place in the world and, and are thinking broadly about these sorts of things. Um, the third question, uh, and th there are usually um, personality types that this one just jumps out at. So this is reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? So as I say, uh, the first category of student for whom this question can really jump out is the student who's the very politically active student, the student who's an advocate, who is staging hunger strikes and marches and maybe is active in student council um, and is really one of those like, uh, so as a, as a teenager for myself, um, my mom will happily tell you that I was often one of those who said, you know, you're not the boss of me. I often wanted to challenge um, received belief, received wisdom. I wanted to sort of figure things out on my own. Um, and, and there were friends of mine who were, who were certainly that much more in terms of their political activism than I could ever have been um, both as a high school student and then even now in my, my post-academic and professional life. Um, that, so that's not necessarily one that I would uh, write about because I don't fall into say that bucket of the really um, active advocate. Uh, but if this is you, if you um, are one of those students who is often agitating for change, this is an opportunity for you to really articulate those causes that matter to you and how you have tackled trying to make a difference in your world. And again, it's balancing those two sides. So what are the causes in my particular world that I'm fighting for? And then how does that fit within a broader context to demonstrate that while I'm fighting for say, green initiatives in my own local school, 
um, and making change here, it fits within a broader uh, climate activism framework. And so, and I'm aware of what I'm doing from a grassroots level ground up at home in my school and my town, but I also am thinking already about how do I take this climate change advocacy to the next level, if that's something that you're really um, passionate about. The other bucket of student for whom this question really applies is uh, the student who um, was raised in a particular environment and has emerged from that. So if you were raised um, in, a, in, a, in a really liberal environment and you've converted to be far more conservative, whether that's politically conservative or religiously conservative, or conversely, if you were raised in a very closed religious community and you've emerged from that um, through sort of a crisis of faith or you've had a sort of paradigm shift in the way that you've seen the world, either because you yourself have made that shift or perhaps there was a family circumstance that took you from one context to another and you had to uh, make your peace with that kind of shift. That's the other bucket of students who can do really well uh, in this kind of question to showcase um, that significant change in circumstance and how that change in circumstance also affected your own belief system and, and what you did to navigate those changing waters. So again, um, it, it won't, the, the tip here or the thing to avoid is it won't be very compelling if you say, okay, well, I was raised in a really strict religious environment and I went to a religious school in elementary school and right up through high school. Um, and I'm hoping to go to religious school for college. That obviously isn't demonstrating that kind of change. Uh, you want to then showcase um, that you've, you've changed uh, that outlook in some form or another. And then uh, similarly, if, for instance, in that example, to carry it on, let's say you were raised in a very religious context in your youth and have emerged to have a different worldview later, um, while it is perfectly fine to have whatever feelings you may have about that shift in your own life. If your essay makes it come across as though you're bitter um, or resentful, that can be hard to read as well. So one of the things from a classical rhetoric perspective that, uh, that writers um, like to say is that when you're writing, you want to sort of capture the benevolence of your reader. You want your reader to want to read about you. Um, so if you're saying, okay, well, I used to believe this and now I believe this, and you frame it in such a way that the first belief system is wrong and stupid and I hate the people who, who made me live that way, um, that can be really hard for somebody to read uh, unless there's, you know, there's, there's really a uh, good reason and the things that you, you suffered were, you know, horrible or something like that, but then you may uh, find it better to talk about that in the obstacles question. But anyway, so that's the two buckets of students, the really advocate, you know, I'm, I'm the, the, the fighter for justice uh, in my school, and this question speaks to me, or uh, the student who uh, really is, is um, uh, has changed those views. And so, Micah, you're jumping in. Are there some questions you want me to answer? Yeah. We have a great one that I think is going to apply probably to a lot of these essay questions, but I especially see how could it apply in this case. One of our viewers would like to know that most of these essays do have word limits. So yeah. how can they condense their experiences down so that those can really shine? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. So the way to condense it down. So firstly, um, you'll have to write a long version. So I don't know any way around um, getting a first draft to be within the word limit. Uh, in most cases, you have to um, write your responses out as long as possible and then start condensing things down so that you can really narrow in on the key plot points that are crucial here. So, you know, using this one, let's say I want to talk about my advocacy. I'm going to have to pick uh, perhaps a march that I planned in my school, and that's what I'm going to focus narratively my essay around um, about this, um, this march to for social justice of whatever sort. And I'm going to write that entire story and then I'm going to be able to identify what are the crucial elements and I don't think there's a way you can kind of shorthand it at the beginning 
Um, but to write and then edit is, is kind of tip number one on, on that in terms of a tactic. What else have we got, Micah? See, I think that is all of our questions for now, but I think that's just a great way of looking at it is finding those common threads and things like that and maybe one event that kind of exemplifies yeah. what you've done. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And now if we go uh, to question four and, and keep the questions coming and, and, and as you saw, Micah will jump in and she'll, uh, and she'll let me know. So if I'm not going through things that you want to hear about, um, ask them now or save it till the end and we'll, we'll have time for some Q&A. Um, so number four, reflect on something that someone has done for you that's made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. How has this gratitude affected or motivated you? Uh, and again, the, the takeaway here is that what you want to express is your sense of, of gratitude. Um, the tip that I have for this kind of question, if this is the one that you choose to answer, is that what you want to demonstrate is how you are translating that sense of gratitude for what's been done for you into an ethos of say paying it forward in your own life or changing how you behave in some way in your own life. Like, so what are the lessons learned essentially? So not only am I grateful because of the opportunity that somebody gave me or the kindness that somebody extended to me or the surprising way in which this person um, offered me an olive branch and we were able to mend um, an uncomfortable situation. Um, all of those kinds of institute incidents of gratitude then give you an opportunity to change. And so being able to reflect on that um, doubled side of the gratitude and then how I was able to change. Um, and again, uh, the caution here is to ensure that the things that you're grateful for um, will stand out as being significant in some manner. So we all have things that we're grateful for in the sense that often um, we, we, we may have families that we love. And so we're grateful for our families, but a lot of people have families that they're love that they're grateful for. And so that's not ne necessarily going to make you stand out in some way, um, unless your family is comprised of some a makeup of people that is incredibly different and interesting. And so this is an opportunity as well um, for say something surprising. So, you know, you can start by saying, you know, I'm grateful for my family. Everybody seems to be grateful for my family, but let me tell you about my family. And it may be that your family is constituted in a way that's really surprising. Um, and that could then make this stand out. And so that's again, across the board, um, I'll add that as a, as a tip that, um, if there is a standard way of answering and you can twist it on its head and make it a little bit surprising, that's also a way to have um, your answer stand out a little bit. Um, and so again, it comes up here in this gratitude one, we all have many things to be grateful for. Uh, if there's something surprising about the things that constitute your sense of gratitude and thankfulness, either to a person or a circumstance, it may be actually I'm thankful because, you know, this really horrible thing happened to me, but it was, it, turned out to be the best thing ever. And, and let me tell you the lessons that I've learned from this be best thing ever for which I'm grateful. But, you know, in fact, it was surprising because I slipped and fell and broke my leg. And, you know, who would think you're grateful for, for something surprising like that, which seems like a mishap. So that's, again, a way in which you can, you can think uh, in surprising ways if you know what each of these questions is trying to get at. Um, number five is discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding for yourself and others. And again, with this one, it's really looking for um, growth. So how did something change you? How did um, an opportunity here, we've got the branching off of the pathways, how did that um, change you? And the most important part of answering this kind of question is to be able to clarify kind of a before and after. So this is how I was before and this is how I was after that um, experience or accomplishment or event or realization. And so again, this is crystallizing a moment of growth into one thing. So, you know, I had this one event, uh, this one realization, this one and, and here's how I'm a better person or a different person as a consequence of this one event. And so going back to the question as well about brevity given word limits, um, this is a good one that can help to keep you brief, but it's also kind of a broad enough question. 
because really you can narrow it down to one event. So if you can pick, you know, one thing that happened and describe that one thing and then showcase how it changed you or how you're a different person, that can be a way to kind of artificially give yourself some word limits when you begin uh, writing, because you're just looking at one event as opposed to saying like, here are all of these things that happened that demonstrated my growth, or here are all of these obstacles that I've overcome that um, I've, I've had to demonstrate my resilience. This one is asking for you, know, you to try to crystallize it uh, for one thing. And again, um, when you do that brainstorming and you ask the people around you um, and you think to yourself in terms of your sense of pride, if there, if there is something that comes to the surface, uh, like if you're really known as like, you know, the most amazing person at X, um, then X may be the thing that you want to write about um, here because it's your thing. It's the thing um, that is your accomplishment or, or the event that you really shone at and everybody knows you for that particular thing. And so again, that can showcase your own um, sense of self really well. Again, the risk with this one, just to, to flag, you know, sort of the opportunities in the question, but also the risks in the question, um, is that it can come across as a bit of a braggart, you know, like the accomplishment I'm most proud of was when I won the state something, you know, my state step spelling bee, because I'm so amazing, and I beat out everybody else, and I went through all of the regionals up to the state level, and um, it can seem like a list of the things that make you awesome. Uh, and there are other parts of the application that allow you to list the things that make you awesome. Here you want to show that not only are you awesome, but you're thoughtful, uh, you're reflective, you're able to take that awesome event, internalize it and think about it um, in, a, in a way that demonstrates um, that you're a better person or a more intelligent person or a more empathetic person as a result of, of that great, awesome accomplishment. Number six, and this again uh, will speak to a certain kind of student most loudly. This is the describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? Uh, and this really, this is for the creatives among you and the athletes among you, you know, those, those students who, uh, and you'll know if it's you, you know, you know if you are the songwriter and the idea of somebody not letting you play music and write lyrics just makes you anxious even thinking about it. You will know if you are the athlete and you've, uh, torn a ligament and you can't go for a run and you can't play and how antsy you get sitting on the couch and you will know if you're the person who already at uh, 12th grade has three novels uh, unfinished but that you've been working on because you just can't help live in your mind and the, and the creative world in which you find yourself and so um, what is key here or what um, what can make you stand out is if you're really able to um, be as honest and as vulnerable as possible talking about your passion. And so this is can be hard uh, because often as students, we're kind of asked to quantify our passions. So to think about our art in terms of AP art grades or our sport in terms of varsity teams and games won and um, when the actual lived experience of um, articulating your passion uh, gets at something that's a little bit deeper. So what is it that captures your imagination about your passions um, and being able to really showcase that? And particularly um, if you're a very good writer, so for some students where their passion might be poetry or songwriting, um, or novel writing, um, you can really play linguistically so that you're showing not telling. Your essay in and of itself can be an articulation of that art form. Um, similarly, if you're, if you're really funny, uh, if the thing that you're passionate about is you're an amazing stand-up comedian and you could be on stage and, uh, and, and for hours and think that it's minutes, um, that sense of comedy can really make your essay stand out here. Uh, so those are ways in which you can um, showcase uh, 
a sense of vulnerability and honesty while also having the opportunity to talk about the thing that you love most of all in the world. Um, now, if this isn't you, because it's tempting to, um, to, to think that we, because we do all have passions, but this one is really asking for those, those deep and abiding passions. And so if you're um, if you have lots of passions, if you like to read and you like to ride your bike and you're a great swimmer and you're also part of the drama club, um, but none of those are your one really sort of singular um, thing that you want to talk about at length, then this might not be the, uh, the question for you because you might be trying to cram too much into it if you try to talk about all of those passions. So that's again a, a warning I would give for this particular question. And the final question is where you can, it's like a choose your own adventure. You can choose an essay on any topic of your choice. It could be something you've already written. It could be um, something that responds to a different prompt. And so the way that the common app prompts work really is you get prompts for your um, essay every year. But as I said, really, it's just an invitation to write your personal statement. And so if there's something that you want to write about that you haven't seen captured in this idea of like the differentiator, the obstacle, the change, the gratitude, the growth, the passion, uh, and all of those previous six questions, then you have an opportunity here to kind of choose your own. Um, now, again, there are two ways to tackle this. One, you do just choose your own and write about something that isn't captured in one of the other ones. Um, the risk of that is that you may actually be writing an answer to one of the other prompts, um, but not focusing yourself enough. Uh, and so it may not necessarily work out. And the reason there are the other prompts is because the other prompts can help take um, inchoate ideas and help to give them a refinement and a focus. And without that, um, you may talk about a number of things, but not narrow it down. The other way to tackle this particular prompt is if um, you have a really good essay that maybe you've written for school or um, something that you have uh, submitted and it's been published um, elsewhere, uh, if it's really excellent, and by excellent, I mean it's been adjudicated um, by, by people really in the know, and that's something that you want to showcase and that you're the most proud of, um, you can submit that and you can say, you know, this, I'm, I'm really proud um, of this short story that I uh, have written and had published in like a legitimate literary magazine. And I'm including this as my application essay because I'm really, it is the, the piece of writing that I'm most proud of and it is my most significant accomplishment and I'm including this. Or if it's, as I say, it's a scholarly essay and it's on something as mundane as Hamlet, but um, your teacher has made a point of highlighting that this is uh, the best essay that they've ever read on Hamlet, um, then maybe that's something you would consider submitting as well. Uh, because again, that's uh, a subject that many students will have studied over the course of their lifetime. And there have been um, more essays on Hamlet written uh, than anyone would like to imagine. And if yours really is truly excellent, then maybe that's something that you want to showcase. So those are some things to think about in this sort of choose your own topic um, as the seventh question. Um, now, one of the things that, I, that I've kind of flagged as we've gone along, again, so brainstorm in advance, try to get some ideas, um, focus your response around sort of one or two um, events, topics, ideas. If you're funny, be funny. Um, if you're not funny, don't try to be funny. Um, if you are dramatic, let some of that drama seep through in your writing. If you're not dramatic and you're just more of a kind of plodding writer, that's fine too. Um, and you can even have a sentence that says that, that says, you know, I, I wish I could be more dramatic, but I'm methodical in everything I do. And this essay is going to be methodical too. That's also fine because if that's really and truly who you are, that's going to come out in the rest of your application and all of the other extracurriculars that you've done. Um, now I do have, uh, we have the question and answer, but I was going to, before we go into the question and answer, I of course have to do the promotional bit, which is um, at the end of this uh, webinar, 
you'll receive an email and you'll get a discount. And the discount is for the company where I work. So as we mentioned in the bio part, so I was an English professor, an English teacher, and then I founded um, an academic writing software company called Essay Jack, which was acquired by Wise this summer. Wise is a platform that once you get to university, it has all of the subjects that you need. So there are, are mini video lessons, problem solutions. So outside of English, um, there's also you know math and chemistry and everything else that you'll find yourself taking. So uh, you will get a deal um, in the follow-up email um, and it will be a deal for WISE. Uh, those of you who are watching this recorded afterwards who, who didn't sign up, um, you don't get the deal. You just get all of the learnings that have come out uh, from the webinar. And so I'll stop at this point so that we can have the opportunity to get some specific answers to questions that you might have um, as you're thinking about uh, your own essays now that you've had a chance to kind of brainstorm a little bit. Right. Lindy, that was just fantastic. I can't tell you enough how much I wish I had had your lecture when I was going through this process. I have a couple of younger cousins who are going through it now, but goodness gracious, this would have been a huge help to me. We do have another question okay. from one of our viewers that they are asking if it is possible to submit research that they have done rather than submitting an essay. So I suppose that would be more along the lines of, say, a scientific paper or something. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. And that kind of and that gets at that sort of option number seven. So let's say. Um, what you have is um, like a research paper, essentially. So, uh, and it may have, and it may be based on um, science research that you've done, field research that you've done, ethnographic research that you've done. And if, again, if that's who you are um, and it's, uh, and, and it has been judged by somebody else to be an excellent example in the field, then absolutely include it. Um, again, as, as, as I have been doing this whole way, where I sort of say, here's the opportunity and, and here's the risk. So the opportunity is, um, you know, if that's, again, the field that you really want to go into, so you're going to go into pre-med and you've already had the opportunity to do some significant scientific research in, um, in life sciences, and you've been able to write that up and you've had a really good sort of research experience and research mentors helping you there, and you have something that you want to submit, absolutely. Absolutely, because you know the rest of your application is gonna is gonna showcase that that's who you are. However, the risk is um, that what can be a really good scientific paper at twelfth grade or eleventh grade um, isn't necessarily an amazing example of um, research scholarship uh, once you get to college and graduate school and beyond. And so the risk is that what you might think is really amazing isn't necessarily amazing. So just as I said, say with the overcoming obstacles one, you have to make sure it's a genuine obstacle. Um, otherwise you can seem to be missing out on the broader context. Similarly, the risk is with um, submitting a research paper is that unless you sort of quickly do a survey of the landscape to showcase how your piece of research fits within the scholarly discipline, um, you don't want to fall flat on that. So, so again, that's a very long answer to a very good question, which is yes, here are the risks and, and just know what you're getting yourself into. Fantastic, fantastic. Lindy, we have another one that goes back to that prompt on a motivating event. So one of our attendees would like to know how to figure out what motivating event they need to go after. You know, how do you narrow that down? Because I know that, you know, all of us have experiences that I suppose you could throw under that motivation umbrella. So how do you narrow it down to one? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, and again, I, I often think sort of surveying people around you is often the best way to get at least a starting point. Like, because um, you might not know yourself. Whereas again, if you say like, is there, um, when you think of me, what do you think? And then if, if more than one person says, well, like, I was so amazed how you overcame that car accident or like, you know what, actually, this is really weird. But that one time, you know, in eighth grade, when you reached out to the new kid and, you know, whatever, like other people will tell you. And then once you hear that, you might think, like, oh, actually, yeah, that is that is something that changed who I am. Um, and, and then you're not forcing it. So that's a way to narrow it down is to ask the people 
around you, um, you know, and, and, and if there's something that you're thinking about yourself, so you're saying like, actually, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, event X, sense check it with your best friends. So sort of say like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, remember when I did that thing, like, I'm thinking of writing about that and your friends, they'll tell you if they're like, well, that sounds, doesn't, you know, that doesn't really sound all that good or that doesn't sound interesting or I don't even remember that event. Um, and so that, again, not to say that you automatically dismiss it, but that can be a warning flag that that, um, that that event may not be the one that captures who you really are by the people who, who know you most of all. Um, again, another way to kind of narrow down the event is also to think of it in terms of um, the personal and then the larger geopolitical. So if I talk about this event, does it give me an opportunity to link it to anything broader? Or is it just a thing that affects only me in my, in my small world? So again, um, the, the best events are those that um, can tie to something else so that you can extend your reflection uh, into something a little bit uh, broader to show that you see yourself and you're thoughtful about yourself, but you're also thoughtful about yourself in the world in which we live. I suppose this kind of ties into, I suppose, the second part of that question is how to approach that. And I actually want to use the viewer's words here because I think they're a great way of phrasing this, but how to approach it without being too much. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? There's, there isn't any one um, answer into that. So how do you approach it without being too much? Because uh, some people being too much is actually who you are. Uh, and so if you are a too much kind of person, then don't be afraid of showing that uh, in your writing. So if you are one of those people who everything you do is the biggest and the loudest and your emotions are on your sleeve and you will cry and laugh and be the loudest person in the room and that is just who you are, then your, your application essay, if you're, you're choosing to write about something that showcases that, it might be too much because you are just too much. Uh, if that's not your personality, though, if you're not um, the biggest and most boisterous, and the, you know, then uh, what you want to be able to uh, capture is who you really are without adding any melodrama. And so watching how many adjectives you have, um, trying to have precise and concise sentences that are as sparse as possible so that every single word in the sentence is absolutely crucial. And if you took out that word, the sentence is going to mean something different. Um, and once you start to get down to that stage of editing, uh, then you're able to be as precise as possible. And that helps to weed out the, the too muchness. And not to get too promotional here, but guys, if you do use Pro Writing Aid, a great tool to look at this is yeah. both the readability um, report as well as the sticky sentences report and the style report. All three of those will help you narrow down to what the working words of your sentence yeah. really are and help you kind of get to the heart of the matter in as few words as possible because of yeah i was gonna say that i was gonna say the sticky sentences so yeah because that, that's gonna that'll showcase you which words you really need and which you don't all right we have another one for question number two overcoming an obstacle could a late diagnosis of dyslexia dysgraphia and add um plus a portion on kind of a recovery and gratitude to a tutor who has helped be kind of a reasonable response absolutely absolutely i mean ultimately what you're what you're saying is like is it reasonable if i'm kind of combining the obstacle and the gratitude um, together into one one response and so so number one um those uh so those late diagnoses are absolutely um obstacles and the way in which um you're able to write about and think about your experiences um, it being um, undiagnosed and neurotypical to then post-diagnosis and the kind of help and guidance can be really tremendously powerful. Um, particularly like as we start to think about different um, modes and, and aspects of diversity, um, also thinking about neurodiversity is one of the most important and often overlooked. And so again, in terms of something that's going to stand out, 
um, certainly that's one that that can work. And then again, as I say, like uh, do a Google search of, of, you know, your age at diagnosis and the particular um, names of the things that you have been diagnosed and see how common it is. And, and that again can sort of layer in that sense of confidence that like, oh, actually this is like, this is not like a, a you know, one in five people goes through this you know, I'm only 17 years old and I'm one in, you know, 100,000 people who has had this happen to them. Uh, so that's, that's again, uh, I would say absolutely right about that. Absolutely, you can combine that sense of the obstacle and then the gratitude to the particular person who has helped you navigate your way through that uh, could be really compelling. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Well, guys, do you have any other questions? Lindy, I think you were so thorough. We may have answered almost everything from everyone. So please. Well, it's hard, it's, it's hard to give sort of an overview of everything, but then also want to get some of the nitty, nitty gritty um, uh, out. So, you know, now's a chance, you know, the last questions and then we'll, we'll close it off. And, and I will wish everybody, of course, luck during this application season. And I am just now reposting a little bit about that coupon code as well as Dr. Lindy's blog post for you guys to review. All right. Well, Lindy, it looks like we have covered everything. Woohoo! All right. This is success. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for attending um, today. Lindy, thank you so much for being with us. It was a fantastic presentation. I know everyone got a ton out of it. All right. Uh, it was my pleasure to be here. Thanks very much. All right, thanks all and have a great rest of your day.